Hey everybody, we're going to talk about Wells Fargo today. It is one of my favorite bank stocks to buy right now, and that's even more true after its recent earnings. Now, the earnings report wasn't stellar, but the stock plunged in response, and most of the issues I see is kind of temporary. So before we dive in, please take a minute, check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. Get a lot more great stock ideas from my sponsor, The Motley Fool. It's the best way to support this work I'm doing on YouTube. Again, that is fool.com slash Frankel. So I'm going to share my screen for a second. After earnings, Wells Fargo's stock dropped by more than 6% as I'm talking. I'm, I'm recording this about two hours after the market opened on their earnings release. So I'm going to put this up here. This is a chart of Wells Fargo stock performance this morning. This is after the earnings release. You can see it dropped by a little over 6%. Um, or actually almost 7% as of this recording. Could be a little different by the time you read it. Stocks tend to be a little volatile after earnings. But point is, stock was down, even though earnings and revenue both beat analyst expectations. First of all, with banks, beating earnings expectations is more common than you think and really doesn't have that much to do with how the stock reacts. But second, the big disappointment was net interest income. So in the quarter, Wells Fargo reported $11.9 billion of net interest income. It was $200 million less than expected and represented a 9% year-over-year decline. Now, as you can see in their presentation right here, net interest income has steadily declined. Now, this is somewhat expected. Um, the short version is that funding costs, meaning the cost of deposits and the cost of borrowing money, have increased over the past year or so, but the co the yields being paid by their loan portfolio, most of which are you know long term loans like you know, mortgages, auto loans, things like that, the yields are mostly from when we were still in a low interest environment. So the deposit cost and funding cost has been rising a lot faster than their portfolio yield. So it's expected. This was just significantly worse than 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 even the you know the pessimistic analyst expectations. So you can see over the past year, net interest income has declined by 9%. And it's not because their loan portfolio is down. It's because the net interest margin, you can see here, went from 3.09% in the second quarter of 2023 to 2.75% in the current quarter. And it's been a steady decline. It's just been worse than expected. Now, I mentioned the loan and deposit base they haven't really declined that much, not enough to justify that drop in net interest income anyway. You can see the loan portfolio has declined a little bit, um, down by roughly you know, to 3% year over year. Um, and that's mostly due to consumer loans. And that's by design. Wells Fargo has kind of tightened credit standards and things like that on personal loans in an uncertain economic climate. The deposit base is almost exactly flat year over year. You can see that on this side right here. So the deposit base is still holding steady. Um, it's just that their deposit cost, if they don't want that to fall and lose share to you know online banks that are paying a whole lot more, they need to uh, increase their cost of funding as well, uh, especially for non-consumer deposits, you know, commercial deposits, corporate deposits, wealth management deposits. They all expect the higher yields than they were getting a couple of years ago, and Wells Fargo has to deliver that. Um, so looking at some other things, one strong point was non-interest income. Wells Fargo's fee-related products are doing really well. Um, you can see investment advisory fees were up 11% year over year. Um, deposit and loan fees were up 7% year over year. Um, investment banking is starting to become more of a part, more of a um, part of the business. Remember, Wells Fargo is the only one of the big four banks that does not have a big investment bank. Um, but that could be changing. Investment banking fees were up 70% year over year. Um, still a pretty small part of the picture. You can see this column right here is the second quarter. The little, um, I guess you'd call it like the, the, you know, the, what do you call that? Bright red, purple. This one right here, the 641 right here, is the investment banking fees. You can see not a big part of the picture, especially when you uh, compare it to something like a J.P. Morgan Chase or Bank of America. Um, now, if we move over here to charge-offs, credit quality, and this is another part where um, analysts are a little bit um, 
you know worried about. You can see uh, uh, the provision, the net uh, loan charge off rate has really climbed over the past year from 0.32% steadily climbing. It was 0.57% in the most recent quarter. There's a fear that that will get even worse if we fall into a recession or as people, you know, start losing their jobs, they can't pay their bills, things like that. Um, it's not something to be concerned about just yet, but it's something to keep an eye on for sure. Um, and another thing I wanted to point out down here is the consumer banking statistics. Um, you know, loan originations are still down, uh, especially on mortgages, which is really why we saw the loan portfolio fall by 3% year over year, as we just mentioned. Um, mortgage originations were $7.7 billion worth in the same quarter a year ago, and that was already down quite a bit from the previous year. Remember, the real estate slowdown happened toward the end of 2022. Um, so this was when the market was already slow and higher rates, higher mortgage rates have kind of really kept that low. Um, you can see it's still down year over year. Um, and the second quarter is usually pretty seasonally strong for, for mortgage or origination. So that's not great, uh, but not necessarily a permanent thing. Auto loan originations are a little bit down as well. People aren't making as many big ticket purchases right now in an uncertain economic climate. Um, especially inflation is kind of squeezing consumers. They're not as hesitant to go out and buy a new car or not as willing to go buy a new car. One thing that is going on really well and is something that's kind of, as a certified financial planner, is a cause of concern for me is credit card volume. And this is up across the board industry-wide. You can see it went from $38.3 billion of credit card sale volume uh, a year ago to almost $43 billion in the most recent quarter. These are kind of this, the fact that fewer people are getting mortgages and auto loans, which are asset backed loans, and are getting more credit card and taking on more credit card debt is fueling the fears that we're going to run into serious um, delinquencies and things like that. So, just something to keep in mind there. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and just kind of go into some of the reasons why I like the stock. One, I've been a Wells Fargo shareholder for some time now. And the stock is down almost 7% today. So clearly, I like it better than I did yesterday just because of that. Um, all of the negative factors I mentioned in this video so far are pretty much temporary ones. Um, you know, the interest headwinds are a temporary head, uh, a temporary problem. Um, you know, margins have been contracting but could expand just as easily as interest rates fall. Um, it, Consumer confidence um, should increase as interest rates fall. And as the most consumer focused of the big four banks, Wells Fargo should be a beneficiary. In the meantime, the bank's spending a lot of money on buybacks. It spent about 6% of its total market cap in buybacks in the first half of this year alone. Um, it's still operating on the Fed's uh, asset cap that was kind of a penalty put in place. Remember back in those, the fake account scandal days? You know, I think that was what seven or eight years ago now. Uh, but it still limits the company's ability to grow. There's a good reason to believe that's going to be lifted within the next year or two. And it still trades at a pretty low price to book valuation of about 1.3 times book. It was 1.6 before that asset cap was put in place. Um, so all in all, I still think Wells Fargo is a great value stock. I think that even more after these earnings. And I love it when stocks fall on temporary headwinds. Let me know what you think. Uh, any questions you have, I do, I'll do my best to answer any of them individually. And thanks for watching. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than four times. So go to fool.com slash Frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 650% as of April 16th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 148% as of April 16th, 2024.